You chaps love doing the top tens. Am I correct? Yeah, people like those. They're fun. Splendid. Why don't we do top ten gold dress watches for white tie soiree? Uh, don't you think that's a little bit niche? I mean, how many people actually get invited to white tie events? Everyone who's anyone, darling. <laughs> All right. How about a top ten watches for a fabulous holiday on one's yacht? Um, no. Uh, most people don't own yachts. Really? How ghastly and unfortunate. Okay, top ten rare Cartier watches for opening night at the opera. Oh my goodness, no! How about something a bit naughty? Oh, oh God, what do you got on your mind? Top ten ghastly new money watches we can turn our snouts up at and laugh at for being so awfully unseemly and unbearably vulgar. Perhaps something for those on a budget. Top ten bargain Turbion watches under half a million. Can you just get TGV back on the line, please? Huzzah! I've got it. Top ten watches to wear whilst wine tasting in the Loire Valley. I'd watch that. Mark, 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 darling. Hello. Hello. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to yet again the monthly video podcast thing. We we still haven't decided what to call this. Just watch chat with my good friend Mark from Long Island Watch. How are you, sir? Oh my goodness, great, cra- <laughs> absolutely stressed. crazy. Yeah, stressed is a is a good word. I was like, when you put this in the calendar, and I looked at my calendar. I'm like, okay, Friday. Friday's fine. I'm like, I could do Friday. And then as the week started creeping up on me, and I'm in the process of moving my business and right, right, you know, right. yesterday I was over there the whole day and then I came here and then I looked at my clock before and I said, oh, I gotta, I gotta go. Mm. And usually it's you that hold me up. And this yeah, time usually, it was, it was yeah. me. My <laughs> batteries were dead on my microphone. I think I was cursing my brains out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to include that in the, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, let's, let's start off with the wristwatch check from, from you. Um, oh, sure. you got something, what is that on your... This yeah. one? Yeah. So this is the new, I'll show people. Okay. This is the new Islander. I named it the Bayport. The Bayport. Um, Bayport. Oh, yeah, which yeah. Is, it's, so, it's, a yeah. Town on, it's a town on Long Island. Right, right. Um, and I guess it's my first, quote, unquote, original design, if you will. So a lot of, you mm. know, it's not like an SKX. So a lot of people like, you know, kind of excited about it. I'm very excited about it. Um, released it yesterday. One I of the noticed skews, it. I saw it on the Instagram, yeah. and I was like, "It what does is great that? on the Instagram." One of the skews almost is almost sold out. Um, wow! So yeah, no, it's uh, it's a cool watch. Comes in five colors. It's 40 millimeter sapphire H-link bracelet. All the congrats. All man. the good stuff. Thank that's you. A, it was a good. It's a really clean design. I love it. And then burying the lead a little bit. So I'm wearing a marathon ah, of because course. we're discussing military, military watches. watches. Right? Yes. Da, 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 da. Very so, nice. My tremendous. Yeah, that looks this huge. Is, this is what a is jum- that? jumbo day date. <laughs> so what is it? 46? 40, yeah, I think it's 46. Yeah. Wow. And look how you, know, you can see how tall it is. Yeah. Yeah, you pull it off though. You, you, it's you, fine. I don't care. Yeah. My wrist is small, but God, you can knock somebody out with that. You really could, like, yeah. I mean, not that I ever would, because I've probably never thrown a punch in my life. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and even on the rubber, it's like extremely heavy. On the bracelet, forget it. I, c- I can't imagine how. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, I have something because we're doing military watches. Of course. I have something very, very special. I borrowed it uh, from the. Oh. Good- Actually, I need you to do a little thing for me. Could you say? Uh, Bulova, the way you Bulova. Say it. No, no. Oh, <laughs> it's funny because now sometimes when I say it, that's the way I say it. Right, right, right. Uh, Bulova. Bulova. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take that sample just once again. Bulova. Bulova. I'm going to dub in like a bad 
like seventies movie. Every time I say Bulova, I'm just gonna put Bulova. So enjoy, guys. So there you go. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm I'm wearing a Bulova. This is the Mill Ships. Oh, cool. And after my visit, yeah, yeah. Um, they said you know borrow anything you want uh, oh, that's for nice. as long as you want, which is great. So I had to I had to try this. Out. I don't know what's better, the offer or the watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, I do have to send it back, but I'm enjoying my time with it. It is amazing. This is the limited edition. They did yep. two. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the story, we'll discuss it in a little while when we get yeah. to later sure. on. Um, but the story behind it and the design is just, there's some things I can already don't like about it. And there's some things I absolutely love, but right. it's crazy. It's a I'm beautiful glad. It looks course. nice. It looks nice. Yeah. And, and you know, it's got this like... You know, which is the Squally with the push down bezel? Oh, uh, that was the 2002. Right, right, right. No, That's... wait. Yeah, that was 2002. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a big one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a big honking watch. Yeah, it's got the same kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Vibe... If you tried to turn it without pushing it down, it would. It was very tough and it would ratchet, but if you just pushed it and turned it, it was very smooth. Yeah, it's got the yeah. same system. That's pretty cool. It's beautiful. 40 millimeters. I, you know, as you probably guess, we, we're discussing military watches. Um, yes. There's only one rule. Well, five picks each. Yes. Uh, and one rule is the brand had to be issued officially at some point. Yeah, well, one of mine won't, so sorry yeah, about but that we rule. No, no, we discussed we that. We discussed that. But I'm actually, I actually talked to them this morning, and uh -huh. I actually have some really cool talking points about it that right. make it even cooler, so. I, we'll, I'll, 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 yeah, we'll get to that. I, I can already tell it gets a pass because if it's owned or operated by somebody. Yeah, yeah, then, we'll be then, good. Yeah, we're good. So there you go, guys. And all price ranges. Well, actually, most of them are going to be affordable, really. Yeah, except, for the most probably part. Probably yeah. except for this, because it's a collector's piece. But and what are you drinking today? I need to mm. ask. The same rice tea as last time. Very nice. I was nice. I was considering Lapsang Shushan, but I couldn't even spell it. Right? No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so take it away. So I'm going to start where I, where kind of where I started. I'm going to mm. start with marathon. Nice. I think before I even talk about it, I just I jotted down some notes because I used to, you know, be I was never in the military, never served, but I did work for a Department of Defense contractor, mm. um, a, a major uh, major subcontractor, and I have very good experience with military specifications. So. The common spec that most people talk about with watches is Milpref 4, I'm obviously reading from notes, 46374, currently in G revision. There's a few types, there's four classes. Mm -hmm. um, and these are, this is the spec that governs if a watch is going to be supplied officially, officially to the military, it needs to meet this spec. And what is this spec? Well, other than, you know, legibility, timekeeping accuracy, uh, luminescence, wearability, strength, lug breakage, you know, kind of like ISO 6425 stuff. Right, 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 right. Um, it also defines vibration, temperature, temperature shock, altitude, sand dust, corrosion, salt fog, uh, maybe maybe um, centrifugal forces, a whole myriad of tests that the watch has to meet in order to, you know, officially be issued. Mm -hmm. That being said, for many years, you know, it was only issued watches that soldiers wore. Nowadays, oh, I had to look into this a little bit. Soldiers are allowed to wear a watch. It doesn't have to meet the military specification. It just has to be durable and reliable. Mm. So that's why a lot of soldiers, like when I talk about marathon, they'll key in the comments and say, well, I was never issued a watch. You know, I wore a G-Shock or I yeah, wore an I Iron Man or whatever. Yeah. So yes, very true. But marathon still does issue official watches. So just kind of, it was a, a very interesting the way it's mm. worded in, in military dress. I'm so um, glad you addressed that because we should really like set that. that yeah, preface, that's why I wanted to kind of. Yeah, beautiful. But beautiful. now that being said, four of the five brands I'm going to talk about did deliver watches to, uh, well, three of them to specs. One of them is a foreign company, so I don't know what spec they delivered it to. Actually, I do. It was in a video I did. Marathon dates back way, way, way. Started Marathon started in 1939. Company goes back to 1904. I mean, we've talked. We've both talked about them. Mm. Um, so they do supply officially. To the U.S. military, I believe they might be the current only wristwatch supplier to the military if the military goes out for contract. Mm -hmm. um, so that is like 
that is their thing, and yeah. they sell a decent amount of watches. Um, so what does it mean when you sell a watch to the military? Well, it gets its own national stock number, it gets a contract number, and all this stuff is actually engraved on the case back. Not only for US military, they're making watches for, this is actually, um, I don't know if you can see it. I'll send you a picture. Um, Yamam, which is uh, Israeli uh, Special Forces. So oh, this yeah, is a watch yeah. that they gave to them. Actually, if you notice nice. that my, my day of the week is in Hebrew. Um, oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I had to cool. brush up on my Hebrew to figure out it was what day it was. <laughs> I, th I think I'm right. Right. <laughs> I've been to Hebrew school in years. Um, nice. So they do that. They do the Canadian Forces and um, they might do one or other, do they do, one or two uh, other countries. Uh, it escapes you right now. Certain departments within like U.S. Homeland Security and like certain departments, right? Or well, they, and, but they'll do like U.S. Army. Like U.S. Army right. is like where they used to like issue a butt ton of watches. I'm pretty um, sure I saw the the Marines logo on the dial as well. Yeah, they'll, they do they right. do like so they they do Canadian Maple Leaf. They do right. Marine Corps logo. They just started a co-brand with U.S. Army and also with US Air Force. It's more of a, I would say it's almost more of a marketing aspect than it is a real supply aspect. Yeah. Um, but I guess Marathon kind of found that, hey, people, you know, military surplus stores have been around for years, right? Army, yeah. Navy stores, yeah. whatever. Um, so I guess they found, you know, maybe a decade or 15 years ago that, you know, there's a niche there. People want military watches, whether they say US government or not. Um, so they kind of found this niche selling their watches to the public. So yeah. the public can buy official, watches that were made for you know the armed forces now they're mm. not all for the forces like they've made different variants over the years um but you know like something like this you have the gsar the mm. jsar the I msar the tsar and then you have their little general purpose courts which they made in crazy numbers in the 80s which is a uh, tritium that's another right. Thing marathon right <laughs> a lot of it's tritium um little quartz watch that was just super reliable and mm. gpq with general purpose quartz they made it general purpose mechanical i could talk forever about the brand oh yeah yeah, yeah i yeah. do love it but i have to say my favorite is uh sorry to interrupt is uh, yeah please is the navigator i love that design i i bought an owned one yep i s stupidly gave it away as a gift and yeah. now you know i regret it now you so. want it yeah, they make it they make it in sage green they make it in black they make it in brown yeah it's yeah. A nice looking watch yeah absolutely it's light lightweight there's a picture I want to say like on their website or something of an F-18 pilot wearing one. Yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool photo. Yeah, so, yeah. Cool. yeah, definitely. I'm trying to think what else to say. I, I, what I really admire is that they have this unapologetic utilitarian dare to do business. Strictly. Yeah. And That's it. Yeah, it's tool-tastic just yeah, I, there's something very kind of compelling about that. It's a, it's a true tool watch made for, made for professionals. Um, but the public can buy them. Yeah, even the way they do they do the bezels, like on yours, it's so exaggerated. Like, yeah, I'm playing ergonomic. it. I'm playing it. I'm playing it for the for the microphone. No. Nice. Yeah. I mean, and the, the click is it clicks, and then it doesn't go back at all. It's just yeah, beautiful. So, so they're Swiss made and yeah, Canadian, Canadian designed. Based. Right. So it's the company is in Canada. Um, I've known them for years. The the you know a lot of the lineage is still there um uh, uh mitchell yeah they're still in the same Wien. family right yeah mitchell ween is still the, i believe he's the, the vp right. um and yeah they're still the same people it's not like a brand you know like i'll talk about some other brands where they kind of just play on the namesake at this point right there's no playing on the namesake i have to show you a post because i just remembered um i posted this on the urban gentry instagram mm -hmm. uh, i spotted one in a movie Oh, did you really? On Netflix. And I, I, I posted it on, on Netflix. Um, I posted it on Netflix. On Netflix. I posted it on... Maybe uh, one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I posted it on Instagram. Here we go. Uh, I'll show you. Oh, yes. I do remember. Yeah. I, I remember seeing this. There's the views. I'll, yeah. I'll do a cutaway for you guys. I posted it on Instagram. I was like, I couldn't believe it. It's a, it's a marathon. Yeah. It's the Navigator. You know, I went, you know, I went crazy. And they actually reblogged it. Yeah. They, they, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Which is really cool, and it's it's a series called The Old Guard. No, it's not a series. It's a standalone movie okay. by ne by Netflix. Got it. With uh, I can never remember how you pronounce her name, Charlize Theron. Theron. Right. Yeah. Um, and Kiki Lane, who wears the watch in the in the movie, she's excellent, and it's uh, I highly cool. recommend it. So there you go. So cool. Just, yeah. <laughs> right. Go. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, that's okay. the longest I'll speak about anybody. 
Cool. Oh, by the way, um, if you had to pick one, would you pick the one you're wearing or? <sighs> Uh, no, I love the GSAR Anthracite mm. on the black bracelet. Uh, that to me is a really cool watch. That's like 40 that millimeters, right? It's 41, yeah. 41, mm -hmm. nice, nice. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I'm going to go with a watch I actually currently own. I'll, I'll show you there. Mm -hmm. This is a Hamilton. This is uh, from 1982. I have custom, I know I'm going to get flack for this but i don't intend on selling it i've uh, had it cerakoted oh cool um but this is an actual mil spec worn in oh um, nice uh, the lebanon conflict by american soldiers um the hacking i paid more because i wanted sterile dial hacking mm -hmm. so this is the real the real cool. mccoy i didn't have the back cerakoted i'll just show you the back the back Please. has the actual mil spec numbers, oh cool numbers on it so i'll just show you there Oh, nice. Just like a marathon. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, shout out to Jeff at Watchmakers 4. He did this um, uh, seracoding for me. Yeah, Hamilton. You know, I, it's, I wanted to get it out of the way first because it's an right. obvious choice. I, so I was, I was looking at all their watches, I researched and putting my notes together. So the first military watches they did were 1917, all the way until this one, which is the last year. Oh, really? Yeah. So no, it was 82, you said? 82, yeah. 82, okay. So I happened, I didn't realize that I actually bought... You have the final year. The, fi <laughs> the final year, there we go. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, because, of course, in 84, they got bought by Swatch. Yep. Uh, and a lot of things changed. Um, so, 1917, uh, World War II as well. Um, they actually stopped production of all consumer... Uh, and retooled watches. everything, yeah, everything, just so they can concentrate. And they made something like a million field watches. That, yeah, I know, it's crazy uh, for the military in World War II. Then, you know, after the war, they came back and you right. know, they, they had the Venture and they, they, all of that good stuff. Yeah. In the meantime, they were still making watches like this. Mm -hmm. Probably most influential is their um, 1966, which uh, the ha their hacking mil spec watch from 1966. That's what the current car key mechanical 38 is based on. Is based on exactly. Got it. If you if you held them side by side, it's undeniable. But I just think you know they still offer that. Okay, it's a civilian version with the name on the dial, and it's right. not to mil spec, but it's a manual wind. It's it's got their own little uh, I think ETA. Technically, it's their own because right, it's their own for yeah. sure. Um, manual wind. It's just uh, bead blasted. It's just a great, great, nice, thin, capable, mm -hmm. honest field now, watch. Is it auto or a hand winder? Hand wind. Yeah. Hand you, wind, ca okay. you can get the, the automatic versions. I've reviewed all of them. Mm -hmm. um, big, big fan. I should have mentioned the the, the the grade one, two, and three from the 1940s, which is kind of like the progenitor of that design language. Uh, but as you said in the beginning, all based on the military specifications. Right. So, you know, later it had to be hackable. 24 hour. Um, yeah, uh, the scale. Scale. And so it's, it's just amazing history. Amazing history. And yeah. I, ironically, the only time I see them now being worn in a military context is in the movies. So, oh. <laughs> so it's just a strange turn of events. I guess, prop, I guess prop masters like them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I, I love I love Hamilton. So I have to get them out of the way. I can't remember how much they. I think yeah, I bought I bought this for, for under five hundred dollars. That's crazy. And so, where you like like an eBay kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, eBay. Or, okay. Yeah. Um, but be careful. There are a lot of yeah. uh, dodgy Fra ones. Yeah, Franken watches. And Franken watches. Um, just get a good dealer and get something like this. Or you you get the new ones, which are about I think five, six. Yeah, yeah something like yeah. that. And it's and it, relatively inexpensive. Yeah, which I think great value and um, just superb quality. So cool. Back to you. So I'm gonna leave the U.S. and hop on over to Germany, and oh, I'm gonna huh. go to uh, Laco. Hmm. Um, so. Again, another brand probably talked about a bunch you know, on your channel and on my own channel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Laco is a combination of Lacare and Co. Company was founded by I always forget his, the first name. Did I write it down? Yeah, Frieder Locker um, and uh, Ludwig Hummel. Hummel left, starts a movement company called uh, Duro. Probably mispronouncing it anyway. Um, and then they went out and 
eventually started supplying movements right back to Laco. But basically, Laco was one of the original five. Mm -hmm. When we say the original five, it's uh, the companies that uh, were supplying uh, watches to the Luftwaffe. Mm -hmm. um, they were the five ones authorized by the German war machine to make the watches to their spec. And I did do a video on different kind of dials, A dials and B dials mm -hmm. of these pilots' watches. So I'll okay. probably, maybe I'll send you a link or something. Yes. Because um, I, uh, I also show the spec on it. Right, yeah. I'll put it there. Let's, let's put it there. It's one of my right. older videos. But right. Yeah, but I kind of did a, a pretty in-depth job. But this, the five were... Uh, well, you always a, do an in-depth job. I try. Uh, yes. AL, ALS, uh, Wempy, uh, Laco, Stova, and uh, IWC. Right, right. And those five all produced, you know, pilot's watches. Yeah. And, you know, they all kind of look the same, like we're talking about the military watch. You know, eventually when you get into the, you know, the Vietnam, the World War One, the World War Two watches, they kind of all look like yeah. very, very similar because they're all building them to a very similar spec, you know, to, well, to the same spec. Um, so they all wind up with kind of the same look. Um, yeah. But, but you know, what I dig about Laco is they're still around today. Um, mm. Now, granted, it's owned by a different different people own it, so it's no right. longer the original lineage that has it. Um, but they're still making like models almost true to their original. They sell watches that are artificially aged. They do chemical aging, mechanical aging. Oh yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah, really gorgeous. They're, they're, yeah. they're super pricey, but they'll actually go in with tweezers after they age the hands, so the blued hands, right, they'll age them. Uh -huh. Then they'll go in and they'll take the, uh, the you know, like their loom-filled sword hands and they'll flick the loom out so it's broken. So it looks like it was in the bottom of the ocean for like, <laughs> for, for like 40 years. It's super cool, like Can really I, nifty. I have, to, I have to interrupt there. Yeah. If, if this, this is something that only watch people would understand, oh, right? Because if well, you... Well, if I told you I bought yeah. I bought a car and and I yeah. paid extra to have somebody go and smash the window, right? well, I will make another analogy, and right. I think it's people that really are into are into their hobby, so to speak. Because yeah. how many people buy ripped jeans, right? Distressed yeah. jeans, you know, yeah. with the laser I can't that's stand already, them personally. you know, I mean, and it's I, like yeah. I, I rip my own jeans. <laughs> Yeah, my yeah. kids will rip them for you. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I get it. But you know, it's, uh, they do a really cool job, and um, I really don't much to say about them. That's it's about it. I just kind of dig that they're still around, right. and they are one of the original. So, if you want like a real like original pilot's watch, you know, they're a company to go for. Right. They have yeah. their automatic affordable options. Which yeah. So they the have Japanese like their right. Movements. So they have the Japanese the Miyota based uh, A21A movements, which hack. Um, with Sapphire, and then of course, and the, so those um, are branded on the dial, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, meeting official spec to not have any brand on the dial, <clears throat> they have the Swiss variety, which are, you know, better sandblasted cases, nicer lugs, true blued hands, um, Edda movements, which they kind of do some stuff to, mm -hmm. um, but those are, you know, 12, 1300 bucks. Mm. But that's the that's the quote unquote you know kind of more authentic if you will. Yeah, I, they're great. I, I reviewed one years ago, donkeys years ago now, and I remember it was beautifully made. They're all yeah, really, really they're really nice looking. It's what the Germans are famous for. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Beauty and simplicity. Absolutely, um, functionality. Shall I go into my next? Uh, we're staying. Uh, good segue. We're staying overseas. Go. We're go. staying Stay overseas. Over. Go, I'm going to my next one. Uh, I went I went with Seiko. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because well, interesting one. Um, I, it, when, when I looked at it, I, I re suddenly realized that Seiko is the only brand in the world that's mm -hmm. done pilot watches, field watches, and diver watches all issued to the military. Really? Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. I, I never really put it together so that, okay, I'll, 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 I'll cross off Please. the list, right? So. Uh, the, the first ones they did was during World War Two, right? Yep. They did a kind of like a very, it's just a, exactly like you were saying earlier. It looks exactly almost like what what the very, other side were doing, you know? Yeah, yeah, simple to read, yeah. Yeah, but slightly different style and numerals, but the, 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 the thinking and design and functionality was the same. Okay. Um, but they, they split it up into three, so you had one land, air, and sea. So you'd have a blossom for the air force, a little on the on the logo on the dial, a star okay. for the army, and then an anchor for the navy. Cool. But uh, because of the way the war went, they didn't get chance to make many of them. 
Uh, um, true as well. <laughs> yeah, and because all the resources, because it's an island, obviously, that, um, that's why they kind of, you know, went conquered outwards. They needed resources. As right. the resources got more scarce, they just cancelled it. First, it was just for officers. Then it was right. just for the kamikaze pilots, hence oh. the, the, the rather morbid, infamous name, the kamikaze watch. Yeah, I guess it doesn't need to be accurate or durable. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's only got to work once. It's only got to work. So that's, that's why there's not many of them. <laughs> <laughs> it had a very short battery. Battery lasted for like yeah. five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then during the, the, their quartz revolution, uh, yeah. the RAF uh, chose, th th they came out with the first analog quartz uh, chronograph in 1983. Which okay. is famously in a James Bond movie. A year, mm -hmm. a year later, after View, or two years later, I can't remember when A View to a Kill came out, uh, Roger Moore wet, wore this, the, mm -hmm. the first chrono, quartz chrono. Uh, it got picked up by the RAF. They just, they wanted that because it's got a one tenth of a second. Oh, a uh, super sub, sub wheel. Yep. Yeah, that was the 7A287120. Okay. Which is the ancestor of our beloved Flighty. Oh, right, right, right. So it's all kind of interrelated. So you got them supplying their own forces during the Second World War. And then? The, then the RAF. And then uh, the most modern one was, and again, I posted this on my Instagram. Before smartwatches, they were an innovator in, in diving computer watches, you know? Mm -hmm. And they supply the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force, which is their basic, basically their Navy. Okay. Um, so they supplied their divers with these And that was, a, that was a digital? Did yeah, that's so digital. digital. Exactly. Yeah. So cool. that was, I think, late ninety, uh, uh, late eighties, no, early nineties, something like that. My knowledge of of diving computing watches is not that great, but that was the, uh, what was that? That was the M seven two eight. That's um, cool. So can you just imagine they they, uh, who who what other brand can boast that? Right. All three. Yeah. It's great. And probably some more I I don't know about. Right. Probably. You know. That's pretty nifty. Yeah, that is cool. So, and when and how did you discover that? When you just started researching, or well, well when I did the the flighty review, I found out about their connection with the RAF. When okay. I was doing a review of oh, okay. World War Two watches, I found so then, you know, it's like p putting it all together. No yeah, one's actually like, this stays here, this stays here, this exactly. stays here, and all of a sudden, whoop, whoop yeah, exactly. That's so, really nifty. Seiko, if you're listening, not that you are. Please do a reissue, 37 millimeter, the same size, bead blasted case of the military watches you made for the RAF. Make it affordable, quartz, then it's like the original. And I will buy it. Um, Cause I just, I think they're really cool. Or yeah. Islander will do it. Oh, I. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> yes. And they are listening, so. <laughs> no, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna say something about Seiko and, and the three things. Oh yeah, and so I guess it's, it's interesting because today they're still very well known for obviously divers. Mm. Um, their land watches, Alpinist and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. What are they big on in air nowadays? Like, uh, like I think domestically, like in the US, I don't think, I really don't think much. No, I, th I think that market really got taken by uh, Citizen and their... their Navajo, Navitimer yeah, and... Yeah, and, yeah, all those. Because I, I know True. so many pilots that own those. Yeah, di yeah, ditto. You know? Um, yeah, it's, they, they need to kind of go more into that direction. Why not? They have the lineage. They sure do. Anyway, are you yes. ready? Yeah, Number go three. for it. Yours, yeah. So, man, I hope I'm not going to put my foot in my mouth a little bit. I tried to study this as much as I can. I'm on Timex, and ah, yeah. we feel like Timex has a tremendous history supplying military watches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it seems like they don't, because they supplied them all as a different company. They were not mm. Timex when they supplied them. Right. Um, the Timex name came out in 1944. Right. So we're already at the close of World, uh, World War II is ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's prior to then, which is the Waterbury Clock Company. Right. Which is where they kind of still are in Waterbury, Connecticut. Right? That's what they call their, their, their modern. Yeah, uh, field the Waterbury watches. is. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. 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 Um, and they still make their, their old field watches, they make MK1 and stuff like that. Around World War One is when the Waterbury Clock Company, that we're going to be synonymous with Timex, um, mm. started doing the first military watch. Uh, they took a lady's pocket watch. 
put on some lugs, moved the crown, put on a strap, a little bit of loom, and it became a watch <laughs> for World War I. Wow. Um, and then moving on to World War II, then yeah. So the company did make a ton of them. So that's right. what we, I think when we talk about Timex and military watches, that's what people are referring to, you yeah, know, all yeah, of those, yeah. um, those standard, you know, general purpose military watches. Uh, let's see. This was interesting because I found this with, a, with one of the other companies too. Um, that during the war effort, a lot of them, they still made watches, but they started making fuses, yes, gyroscopes. I'm sorry yeah. you found the same thing maybe with Hamilton or uh, whatever. Uh, Belova did the same uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Belova. Uh, Excel, <laughs> accelerometers, all these little, you know, I guess little wartime things that, you know, hey, they're not watches, but a watch factory can probably, has the, has the, the technique you know, technology to churn these things out. So, you know, they're commandeered and that's where they make a lot of these things. That yeah. was pretty cool to learn. Um, so, you know, again, we think of like, in the beginning, we talked about Timex, the Iron Man, you know, the Indigo feature and stuff, but these were never supplied as military watches, mm -hmm. but they're in watches that soldiers wear because they're allowed to wear a watch as long as it's durable. Yeah, I've, I've seen pictures of, um, of yes, soldiers I, I wearing I found pictures yeah. of guys wear, with the missile launcher on their shoulder and yeah, there's yeah. an Iron Man on it. Yeah. Um, so what I did find though, because I'm talking about Timex and it's real interesting history. They made military watches under the name Timex for, am I doing this right? I am doing it right. For, for, <laughs> for, two, uh, for two months only in 1982, February and March of 1982, they built a throwaway watch to the Mil 46374 spec. That was the MK1. They re-released the MK1 when Timex was re right, a couple, a couple, a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was a cheap plastic throwaway watch. It was a movement that was not meant to be serviced. The case was not meant to be opened. It was meant to be tossed. So that was pretty cool. That um, is pretty cool. Yeah. And very few of them actually exist nowadays. They are kind of tough to find. It's kind of like a swatch for the battlefield. Yeah, like yeah, like the System 51 yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking it makes works wonders though for your service department because there's no more service. Ah, right. Throw it away. Of it's course, probably it's why always, they did it. As you say, it. Yeah. of course, always about the Benjamins. Yeah. Um, but that was about it. Uh, and then in later in 1982, so they made the watches for two months. And then later in 1982, they kind of put the kibosh on all mechanical movements because quartz was, you know, becoming prevalent more and more in the right. U.S. Um, so very, very interesting to note that Timex, as a as the Timex manufacturer, really does not have a deep history. Yeah. It's there, the company that they grew from that had the deep history. I did not know that. I knew about the gyroscopes and fuses, yep. uh, but I didn't know about the, that. That's fascinating. And it makes sense because the name Timex didn't even come out until World War II was almost over at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very, yeah. very cool. The modern ones, uh, what, what are they like? Crummy plastic. They look right. like throwaway watches. Oh, like the modern M the modern MK1. You I know, mean, I mean, you can change the battery yeah. and stuff, but you know, it reminds me. I used to sell Timex. And I'm not knocking the brand, but it reminded me of just a cheap marathon general purpose quartz watch, like something mm. even cheaper. It's just a cheap case, yeah. piece of plastic, strap goes through it, you know, plastic lens, and that was it. I think that's a good point to make because <clears throat> I remember when I reviewed the Navigator, a lot of people were like, oh, it's, it's, so, it's only plastic or it's only this. Nah, it's not like, anymore. Well, well, yeah. Now they Sapphire up, now. Yeah, they've upgraded it, but I don't think they understood or maybe I should have explained better or in more detail. Because I did, I did explain it was to, it was to do with uh, pressure in, in, yeah. in, for, um, for parachuting. Yep. And um, it's also designed to be as lightweight as possible because mm -hmm. obviously you're going to have a lot of gear on you. Yep. Um, so it's that is deliberate. It's a difference right. from making something cheap because right. you're trying to cut corners. It's right. very different. But know. it's also, I mean, you know, like the Timex is like a sh uh, an injection molded shot case, whereas the Marathon is not. It's like a chop fiber, you know, real like composite. You know, yes, pl yes, it's plastic. Composites are technically plastics, but it's a high performance case. You know, there we it's go. meant to really take nicks and stuff. There we go. The engineer has spoken. There we go. <laughs> uh, speaking of, oh God, another segue of the century here. What do you got? Um, talking of taking knocks, G-Shock. Ah, it definitely takes knocks. I could not make this list without them. No, of course not. And I didn't, I looked into it and I, I thought, oh, can I include them? Because have they actually officially been issued? Right. 
They have by the Navy SEALs. Oh, cool. This is the DW6600. Yeah. Uh, I tend to call it the um, M&M watch because it's he, he did a limited edition later, obviously. Uh, oh, I was thinking the candies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I <laughs> DW6600. also... DW6600. I'm looking it up. I'm sorry. I also found it in the Marine National book. This is a watch history book. Great, great book if you guys are interested in Tudor. But um, lo and behold, there's a ton of Tudors. And then in the middle of it, let's see if I find it. Oh, oh there's cool. an Omega. Oh, what's that? Yeah, Omega. And there we go, G-Shop. So, and that really has been beaten to hell, Jesus. Now that's a centerfold for watch guys. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Oh, there's a tag. Didn't know about tag. There you go, tag as well. Oh, look at that. Worn by Bond, I think, um, I was about to say Donald Sutherland. That would have been an interesting bond. <laughs> um, uh, Timothy Dalton, sorry. Yeah, right. he, wore, he wore that one in... Um, well, I think was he was only in Living Daylight and... And the other one. What was the other one? Um, yeah. Um, oh, God. Escapes me. My bond knowledge. You guys know. Do you want me to... I'll look while... I'll be like your, produ like your show producer. Oh, I'll yeah. I'll look it up while you keep talking. Nice. License to Kill. License to Kill. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, which was the first one? Daylights. Daylights, okay, so he wore it in Daylights, okay. In 2020, they did a collaboration with the British Army. They, they did a Mudmaster, they did three versions from their oh, cool. Master, Master G series. While that is technically not issued, uh, it is kind of cool that uh, it's an official collaboration. So Absolutely. that's like a quad, um, quad sensor. So you've got altimeter, barometer, uh, thermometer, compass, step tracking, along with the world time. Uh, wow, you know, yeah, it's got everything. Everything, you know. Uh, and it's got a carbon core, huge, humongous thing, uh, which I just thought is very, very cool. They did another collaboration, I'm not sure when, but I do remember seeing uh, a poster for it with the RAF, with the Gravity Master. Okay, you, you don't have to buy, obviously the, the, these limited editions are going to cost more, but non-regular, um, Gravity Masters and Mud Masters, they're about $500, you know? Okay. So I just super, super tough. Everyone knows the history. Sure. Started in 1983 uh, by inventor Kiko Aibe, uh, who accidentally dropped a watch he inherited, mechanical piece, and got the idea, oh, I need to build a watch that can resist. Dropping. Yeah, it was the three tens, 10 meters water, uh, sorry, 10 bar uh, water resistance, uh -huh. 10 meters drop. being able to uh, drop. And what was the third? 10 would, something. Would you like your producer to look it up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then feed, feed me the line and then I'll... Yeah, then I'll, I'll put it in, I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I'll just... Oh, yeah, and, oh, I just remembered, yeah. Um, uh, uh, let's see, uh, 10 years of battery. 10 years of battery, oh, that, of course, of course, thank you. Oh and, the, oh, and the drop, what did you say the drop was? Pretty sure it was 10 meters. It is, yeah, 10 meters, yeah, yeah that's crazy. Yeah. That's, dude, that's 30 feet. That's like a three-story building. I know, I know. I mean, I, if the watch falls off of three stories and it's attached to you, you don't have to worry about the watch working. I, right, yeah. Right? Those brothers are up there with the kamikaze pilots. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a, obviously it's a Japanese obsession, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Seiko Fives, right? Right, the five things, and this is uh, yeah. the Casio 3. I love it. Yeah, but, I, you know, it's in the same way that people go, oh, my watch can go 5,000 meters. Well, I, yeah, but you'll be dead, mate. Yeah, you know? yeah, true, <laughs> true, true, true. Truth. Very um, good. Yeah, so not much more to say. I mean, uh, most most pictures I've ever seen of, of you know, uh, soldiers serving in the field, family right. members included who, who have served. I know they right. wore G-Shocks and I, right. I just, you see it on the news, you know, so right. there we go. Okay, I will, I will move you, on sir. to my numero quattro. Number four, uh, Benris. You know, yes, which is, which I think yes. it's one of the first watches that came to my mind. Well, I had no marathon came to my mind first yeah. when, when we talked about this. Um, I just want to, you know, preface it by saying that the Benris today is nothing that the, of the Benris of yesteryear. No. It's traded on We've strictly on. This before, yeah. It's traded strictly on name. Um, yeah. I won't say that they're good or bad. I'm just saying it is not. Yeah, a little bit overpriced. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm, you said it. <laughs> I did not. I can, I can say these things. A little. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the company goes back to the 20s. Uh, 
uh, Benjamin Lazarus, so that's where Ben Rist comes from, it's his mm -hmm. name, and his brothers. Uh, so they start, uh, looks like, uh, Vietnam. Um, then in 1960, the DTU-2A watch was, you know, I talked about the mil specs in the beginning, but prior to that, there was a mil W3818. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they made the little Vietnam field watch. Another disposable watch produced for five years. They made a ton of them yeah. uh, for the Vietnam War. And then, very interesting, like Timex, they started making fuses, ah, accelerometers, yeah, yeah, yeah. all these little gyroscopes they yeah. you know again called up to the war effort um but you know out of world war ii came that the sky chief which is a really cool watch it's mm -hmm. you know that chronograph um favored by pilots um even to this day it's just a really if you look at vintage pictures of it just yeah. even today i think the design stands on its own um a really really you know as you would say a kraken watch i think it looks great um and then we come up to the the 70s and the government comes out and says they want there's a new spec uh mil w 50 and so like the uh the, the other mil spec i talked about was like army watches now this is like dive watches uh, so like imagine okay. the iso 6425 but instead of it being iso standard it's a mil standard yeah um so that means military usually military standards when you supply mil equipment this is back talk when you supply mill equipment, usually ISO doesn't apply. They don't really want to see ISO. They want to see stuff approved to their own mill standards, like mill standard A10 and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, anyway, mm -hmm. um, so these are deep diving special ops watches produced uh, from the 70s into about 1980. And this is the Type 1 and Type 2. Mm. And this is the watch I think people associate with Benris the most. Uh, it's the cushion case. Sterile, sterile watch, uh, you know, kind of has a turtle-esque uh, turtle S case to it, um, it's automatic diver, rotating bezel, you know, great water resistance. Nice. It's a real no good knock around watch, and like I think that's the one that kind of people trade on today when they when they think Benris. This is the name. That, this is the watch that pops in their head. Right, um, right, right. And then following that, you know, through the 80s and 90s, and then further on, the company like went dormant for a while. And then it was resurrected in the 2000s by some fashion guy. I think it was sold off again. And like I said, today, today's Benris has nothing to do with yesterday's Benris. Right, 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 um, right, right. But yeah. yeah so very cool, very cool. Cool, yeah, cool. Yeah, and I like that they did, so they did the field watches, like, you know, land, and then they did the sea. Right. So that was pretty interesting. So would you say, if you're going to get a Benris, go vintage like the one Oh, I absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Problem is with the vintage, though, I mean, that is it a problem. I mean, you have to go 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go back like, you know, nowadays, yeah, you go back like 40 years to get one. And what kind of state are they in? Back then, people were in holding this stuff for future. They were beating the crap out of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was very lucky to find the Benris I, I got. Um, and I'll put it. I'll put it on the screen for you guys. Practically identical to the Hamilton. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Because it's the yeah. same mil spec. So. Yep. It's saying they're all. You know, it's just like the pilots' watches with Laco. You know, they all being built to the same spec. When the spec tells you what the watch is supposed to look like, they're mm. all gonna kind of look the same. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I'll I'll go on to my next one, which kind of links Please. into that, uh, which is, I guess, my vintage pick. It's Omega. Okay. Um, and. You know, I've talked about this little Seamaster that I've had. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is a um, 1950s, late 50s, just before the trilogy came out that changed the brand forever that we all mm -hmm. know with the Speedy and blah, blah, blah. But I, I used to own uh, their manual wind, what's called the Spitfire watch uh, mm -hmm. from, from the 1940s, which is this manual wind, the caliber 30T2, which is okay. basically, uh, yes, this is an automatic. This is the 500 caliber, but uh, it, they wouldn't have been able to develop that without the what they did with the 30 t2 it was sure um, it was incredibly reliable really rock solid and it was the basis it was like they they took that architecture and ideas and then they made t transformed it into the automatic watch which incidentally mm -hmm. the the 500 caliber in this was also the, f the first caliber in their military Sea Masters of the 1960s, which were okay. issued to uh, the British Navy and blah, blah, blah. That came about because <laughs> the MOD, the um, Ministry of Defense, didn't want to mm -hmm. pay, fed up for paying Rolex. So oh. they, they went with Amiga, who were cheaper. Um, That's kind of like people that want a Rolex today. They might just get fed up and buy an Omega. Right, yeah. So nothing much has <laughs> changed. Um, 
<laughs> so anyway, um, but the, the, the history with the military started way, way back, as far back as uh, the first, first World War, but it really was the Second World War. The Brits bought around about 110,000 watches from Switzerland. Wow. And 50% of that, this is mainly the Dirty Dozen, what's known, known as the Dirty, dirty Dozen, 50% of that was, and the majority, because we're talking 12 brands, mm -hmm. the majority was Omega. That's crazy. So, and they actually have this really cool poster, I'll put it here, where it says, you know, Omega, they, they, they're kind of bragging about it, but in a kind of classy way, they're saying, right. we're proud to, we, we were the choice of supplying the majority of the watches to blah, blah, blah. Uh, to the Allies and you know all that good stuff. So they so they supplied so many watches that after the war, Field Marshal mm -hmm. uh, Bernard Bernard Montgomery f went to the Amiga factory and did a tour to thank them, which I just oh. think is like cool, uh, really really cool. Yeah. In Dunkirk, the movie in the, uh, the 2017 movie, there's the there's the Weems, which is the CK uh, 2127. It has that bezel. Mm -hmm. The one I had is basically the same, but just without the bezel. It's a simplified version. Got it. Very, very clean dials, highly legible, blued hands, just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous watches. And then they had the CK2 Quadruple 4, which is the black dial version. Nowadays, Omega is associated with James Bond, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but when you take into consideration this, you know, almost, uh, well, over 100 years of, 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 of supply yeah. military watches, yeah. it makes sense. Far, yeah. far more than Rolex ever did in, in right. numbers and in, in, in quantity. Uh, I'm sorry, in the length of time. Yeah. Um, and it's weird because the Bond connection after Bond, they did do a GMT version of that Brosnan uh, 300, the uh, Seamaster 300 for the SAS, uh, or was it the SBS? Well, they've done both. So. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like art imitating life, imitating right. art. For sure. So that's something I really do respect about Amiga, and, and, and it gives me a kind of appreciation of mine. For what you have. From what I have, which, um, listen, I, I don't have an issue with the Swatch uh, empire. Right. But, you know, there's something, I don't know, you feel the historicity. You feel yeah, the history kind of, is there. Yeah, so I, I love the, the vintage. So I guess that's my vintage pick. Cool. Yeah. Very good. Very right. good. Back to you. Well, I guess it's my last one, isn't Your it? Your last one. And this is the one that, you know, I need a dispensation from you. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, we're talking about Bertucci. Um, oh, Bertucci, Because right. when I think about military watches, it's like the brand that I usually think of, like, after Marathon. Just yeah. because there's so, every single one of them is so, they're, you know, they're field watches, but they're yeah. so military looking. So yeah, I jotted yeah. out a bunch of notes, and then I actually spoke to um, Michael Bertucci this morning. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so just to get some, just to get a little more information. But, so they're not provided to the military under contract, um, but they make amazing field watches. Uh, the lug bars are, you know, molded into the case so they don't break. Um, it's all passed through straps. They did a a ton of stuff with titanium. They have um, patents for a uh, high polishing titanium, which it looks like stainless steel. It's crazy. Like they're able to polish the titanium, so that wow. it's, uh, you know it's super clean looking. I don't um, think I've ever seen polished titanium. No, 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 no. Sorry, I have. It, yeah, it works. Yeah, it yeah. works. It works. Um, but it's just really cool that they were able. You know, here's this little company. It's a U.S. based company, right? Nice. Um, uh, in I want to say Illinois. And um, they're just doing, you know, a lot of cool technologies, a bunch of patents they have. Uh, they started out in 2004. Um, they've got things like 10-year batteries, fiber reinforced cases, stainless steel cases, anodized aluminum cases, which are super lightweight. Like, aluminum yeah, is lighter than yeah. titanium. And yeah. it is crazy, crazy light. I mean, it's not great from the wear aspect but it, they're just crazy light. Another area they totally excel in is their straps. Their straps are like, they're leather, they're nylon. They're just amazing, amazing straps with really cool hardware. Nice. Swiss movements, Japanese movements, um, all quartz, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there's any automatic. Yeah, they're all quartz. So I guess I talked to them this morning and just to kind of get some info. And so I'm gonna read you a couple of points. So they do sell directly to the military uh, via Gov federal government run stores on bases all around the world. Mm. So they are selling them, you know, in general stores on military bases. Um, 
They sell on some Navy destroyers that are at sea in their stores. That was pretty wait, cool. wait, there's a watch store on a Navy destroyer? Well, there's general, there's general stores on ships, right? I remember I did a tour of the battleship New Jersey and they had like, mm -hmm. a, like a shop. Well, yeah. 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 A but little they general sell store. watches. In they the, sell, that's so we sell, cool. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> so I asked about durability since that's really like the pinnacle of, you know, the mil spec is all about, you know, legibility, great, but it's all about all the tests it has to pass to meet, you know, to meet use. And they... They sell them to so many, you know, military personnel. I thought this was a great quote. He says, I recently checked the average repair age, not warranty, but repairs from abuse. Uh -huh. Ten and a half years old is when the watches come back to them for some Jesus. kind of repair. Yeah. What this means is a simple repair on a watch that has seen hard daily wear for over 10 years. And it just, it's usually coming in for a new crystal or um, a, a change of gasket or fix a hand. Yeah. So that's pretty imp impressive that they're fielded for 10 years wow. in these th that amazingly hostile conditions. Yeah. You know, forget banging it around, the heat, the humidity, if, if you're in a humid environment, um, sand, all that garbage, and they're just surviving. So, you know, it's almost no doubt to me that they probably passed the mil spec if they had to. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. they're just really, you know, cool watches and, very affordable. They start at like, I want to say like 60 bucks or something, and then they go up from there. Just following on from that, do you think mil spec is kind of redundant in a post G Shock world? It, so it is, yes, but it isn't because to supply anything to the government officially, it needs to meet spec. Right. Otherwise, it can't be supplied. Right. Um, so that gets you into your $800 hammers, your $3,000 toilet seats, um, and all that stuff. Oh, I remember stuff. you telling me as well yeah, they had mil you know, spec like, condoms as well. Yeah, the mil spec for frozen concentrated orange juice, everything. So yeah. once you once you want to be an official supplier, you know you have to these these um, procurement document documents come out and they'll say what you have to meet and you know mm. wristwatch, you know wristwatch, and that's you got to read it and then you have to. So it means you have to test to everything on it, and that all costs a ton of money to do all the testing. Right, um, right, right, right. You know, when I worked in at a military in the military supplier, just to do any basic qualification program, just a small program, just to do a little vibration, shock, temperature, blah, blah, blah it was quoted out a quarter a quarter million dollars, and just to do testing, write reports, uh, mm. write procedures, write reports, run the tests, um, troubleshoot all other stuff. So all that gets built into the price of the product. Mm. Um, which is just, it's, it's expensive. It's a, it's a big bear um, for manufacturers to, you know, to put on their back. So that's mm. why, yes, G-Shock definitely meets everything, um, but it mm. can't really be supplied because it's not an official pro, you know, it's not, it doesn't officially meet spec. Until right. it's, you know, kind of like, I'll go back like 10, 15 years ago when, and I'm even still today, you know, your phone has to be in airplane mode or on airplane. There ain't nothing on your phone interfering with cockpit equipment, but it's not qualified that way. The FAA has not qualified cell phones to be used on an airplane, so that's why you have to put them in airplane mode. Right. Because in the remote, remote, remote outside chance that your cellular receiver or whatever interferes, you know, that's a problem. Yeah. Got so it. stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fascinating, fascinating. Go ahead. What inspired uh, Bertucci to uh, become a specialist in this? You know, I don't, I honestly don't know. I really don't know. They, I think they were looking to make the everyday watch for the everyday person. Um, it's funny you say that because he, he actually said to me, he says, we have fighter pilots, oil rig workers, world travelers, doctors without borders, firemen, paramedics, construction workers, mechanics. Every demographic from Timex to Rolex wear our watches. So I wow. think they were looking to make like the everyday watch. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's definitely a brand that found a, a, a niche, right? I, yeah, I couldn't see them yeah, coming yeah. out with a dress watch. It'll never happen. No. It is just their field watches are just their niche. Yeah, very cool. Very, yeah, very cool. For sure. I'll do my last one. And it's funny because when I emailed you, I said, uh, I'll probably do somebody else because we've talked about them a lot. But I, I just, when it comes to military involvement, yeah. There's no other brand except for... Bolova. Sure. Uh, there's no other brand I can think of in the whole world that ha has been run. The chairman was a five-star general. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I did not um, know that. Actually, I'll put a link here. I did a tour of their museum. Uh, he had his own watch. Uh, so, so I am talking about uh, Omar Bradley. 
Okay. Uh, I think the last five star general, but I, I, I fell down this rabbit warren of reading about him. He's an utterly fascinating guy. So he's the longest serving active military uh, personnel in history. So he, mm -hmm. he for, for 69 years, he was an active service, which is just insane. Right. So anyway, he took over the brand. Um, but what's really interesting is that the, uh, you, when I asked them about this, right, and they cannot confirm or deny, but obviously during his time, it was the height of the Cold War, they were supplying the Acatron astronaut to the, the spy plane pilots, you know, the uh, A-12 or whatever, they were right. really high altitude. Right. So they were chosen by the CIA for their pilots. Uh, and then, of course, just like Benrus, just like Timex and Hamilton as well, they also did fuses, uh, gyroscopes. Yep. Um, the only difference is that the Actron movements were used actually in, in satellites because not only did that was the technology in the space shuttle and, and, and the moon landing vehicles and all the, all the timing equipment in that, they obviously used them for spy satellites as well. Right. It's no accident that their chairman was a former right. general, sure. had access, right? Yeah. And, then, and then behind closed doors is also all this technology. Yeah. It's, you you know, think it's one hand washes the other kind of thing? Exactly, exactly. Uh, in the tour I did, they they had actual watches from World War One. They had their World War Two watches, uh, the famous A10 spec hack mm -hmm. watch. So naturally, I had to borrow yeah, one of these. For and sure, it's it's gorgeous. You know, I'm oh god. <laughs> I, gotta get I it back. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's got to go back. Isn't mil spec, but what it's based on is a prototype that they only made twelve of. Oh. Um, small, and, yeah, small very, uh, field. It never got picked up for actually for an actual contract um, back in the day, but it was to compete with the Tornek Ravils, you know, those rebranded um, mm -hmm. 50 Fathoms watches in the 1950s. Yeah. So sure. it goes way back to the beginning of, cool. of uh, dive watches uh, as we know them. So it's got some really cool design traits, like it's got an actual functioning on the dial. I'm not sure if you can see that. You see at six o'clock. Yeah, what is that? Those two. Uh, it's like blocks? a. It's a moisture um, oh, okay. indicator. So Got if it. if you get the, uh, the 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 watch becomes compromised, it will tell you. Cool. So there's two versions. There's the the limited edition, which I have, which has this incredible. I'll put some pictures up so you can see incredible diving bell. Right. Uh, engraving on the back, and it has the Swiss movement and is written Swiss on the bottom. I can't remember the prices, but I'll do a cutaway. Sure. And then they've got the non-limited edition, which to be honest, they look exactly the same at first glance. Right. That has a Japanese movement because of course, now they're owned by citizens. So it's kind mm. of really cool. But 41 millimeters. Yeah. The, f the funny thing is when I first visited, I, f I first visited their HQ, I don't know, a, cu a couple years back. And, and I said, oh, we've got to, I would love to come back and film this, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, yeah, of course, of course. And I didn't think I'd actually do it, but right. I, I noticed this just sitting there with a whole bunch of other watches, cool. right? And I was like, oh, what's that? And they said, oh, we can't, we can't talk about that. It hasn't been released yet. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, you know, like, right. uh, um, it's a bit unusual because it's got 16 millimeter. You see yeah, the strap. I, I, I see the dome on it. Oh, the dome is ridiculous. But very small 16 millimeter strap for the, but but they've done it true to the original design. So right. it wears great. Looks nice on you. Thank you. Um, yeah, God, don't say that. Uh, so it's a tribute to a very, very rare and important watch that never really saw the light of day from right. the genesis of dive watches. Right. Uh, cool. with, from a brand that has the, I'm going to say this, I think they have the richest military His history. history. In a watch brand, I, I challenge anyone to name a brand that's that's made as many f uh, military watches for so long. Sure. I don't really know what else to say. I just think it's tastefully done. It's beautifully bead blasted. It's it's just gorgeous. It works nice. Thank well, you. And enjoy it while you have it. Yes, I am absolutely, absolutely. And you just see the uh, the case. It comes in a diving bell case. Yeah, I'm thing. sure. It's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> it's like it's the most ridiculous packaging I've ever seen. I love it. Right. Um, almost makes me scared to wear it. I want to put it back in its little thing and at night, you know. Yeah, good night. So, good night. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you to Belova for lending this. This is absolutely um, fantastic. Anyway, 
I might do another video, I'll see. Uh, it depends on how much time I've got with it, so. Um, but there we go. I think, that's I think that's about it. That's everybody. Oh, honorable mentions? Have you got any honorable mentions? I don't, I'm good. Are you good? I know you do. <laughs> Done. I know you do. Okay, I have to mention this. Panerai, during World War II, they supplying these crazy human torpedo, Italian madmen on human torpedoes. Uh, speaking of, Squale with the Marina Militare watches. Sure. Citizen with the Marina Militare. Mm -hmm. Yemma with the Superman. Superman. Yep. Um, I should address this. People ask, why did they supply dive watches to the French Air Force? I'm not sure if you guys know, but the French Air Force also have helicopter rescues that do rescue at sea. So, uh, so they were for them as cool. well. Mm -hmm. Briefly issued to the IDF forces. Uh, and probably the most famous, which I'll mention, Tudor uh, with the Marine Nationale. There we go. So just tons of Tudor. Cool. Um, and much longer and much more numerous uh, watches than Rolex ever did. So, sure. had to be mentioned. So guys, please nominate your uh, favorite issued watches in the comments below. <sighs> That's it. That's it. Nice. Well, got to give you a massive thank you to Mark. Uh, thank you so much for sponsoring the production of this video. You're welcome. And we will catch you in the next one. Don't forget to like this video. And uh, thank you for watching. Ciao. Take care. Bye.